beauty runs skin deep. Savor the flavor. You are what you eat. Got it? Probably don't want what's in here. Valentine from 2001. Directed by Jamie Blanks. A very underrated slasher film. Now, this movie is sort of cheesy, campy, and it's basically about a group of women being stalked by a killer. Like we haven't seen that before, right? <laughs> and um, this stars Katherine Heigl. Actually, it shouldn't even star Katherine Heigl because she doesn't last too long. She's in the beginning, and that's it. But you got Marley Shelton, and Marley Shelton, I always remember her from the movie Sandlot. Okay? She's the lifeguard, Wendy Peppercorn. Mmm. That's always what I remember her from. So, um, she is the main chick in this named Kate. You got Denise Richards, who uh, ends up in a bikini in a hot tub. Like, you can't really expect that. I mean, if you see the movie Wild Things, you pretty much know what she's capable of. But anyway, she plays the slut named Paige. And you got the dude from Bones, who plays Marley Shelton's boyfriend. His name is, uh, I think, David Baranaz, or I don't know how you say that. But the dude from Bones. But anyway, pretty good cast in this. And it's a very, very simple plot. You got a uh, grade school dance where this kid, who is hated by most of the class because he's a dork, um, and he has crooked teeth and just a weird face, this kid asks all these girls to dance with him, and they all reject him. But one girl, one girl says, maybe later, Jeremy. His name's Jeremy Melton. And that little girl turns out to be Marley Shelton's character, Kate. But all the other girls who are friends with Kate said no. Denise Richards' character, Paige, said no. You have the outgoing one named Lily, who said no. Um, now here's the thing. I like the dynamic here with all the girls kind of grouped together trying to figure out what's going on with this stalker. Because each of these girls receive valentines. They receive valentine cards in the form of a riddle. Okay. And the riddle pretty much talks about how they're going to die, which I like. It's almost like the Riddler from Batman. But uh, each of these riddles kind of explain that. And what I like about the killer, which you can see on the cover here, he wears a Cupid mask and kind of a black outfit. He also has a kitchen knife as well as a bow and arrow. He uses a hot iron, he uses a drill, he uses whatever he can to kill his victims. That is what I like. He is not prone to just one weapon, like Freddy is. So, that's what makes him unique, and he has a Cupid mask. He kind of reminds me of Michael Myers. The way he just walks around, looks through windows, you know, you know the way he just stabs people. Um, he's got really kind of that slow movement and stalkerish type movement that I really love. He's very, very underrated. As these murders are going on, you know, the girls are older now. They're getting Valentines, threatening Valentines, and they're thinking it's Jeremy Melton who's killing people and sending these threatening valentines. Jeremy Melton, the little kid from the uh, grade school dance that got rejected by everybody. 
I like the kills in this. Um, I think they're creative, like I said, with the with the different weapons. I do like the acting, even though it can be cheesy. Uh, but I like the characters. I think each of the characters kind of represent even what school was like. You have the popular one. You have the outgoing one. You have the slut. Okay. You have the fat girl. Um, Dorothy, who plays the... You know, she was the fat girl. She basically accused Jeremy of kind of touching her inappropriately and kissing her in front of everybody. Everyone used to make fun of her for being fat. And everyone made fun of him. So they were kind of like two peas in a pod. They started making out at the dance. And she seen that some of the hot guys were looking, so she made something up that really sent Jeremy to like, um, you know, kind of sent him mad because of how she treated it. was actually her fault. And um, she's from a rich family, of course. She's got this huge house and stuff, and she's not fat anymore. But you can kind of see the dynamic kind of um, shift even when they're older. She's not fat anymore, but she still gets treated like she's the fat girl. Um, you know, she meets this guy. This guy can't really make love to her. Because he maybe doesn't really find her attractive, but you know there's something deeper going on. But I love that kind of dynamic. Like, the characters are very well fleshed out when it comes to their arc of how they were when they were kids to now. So, it really brings me back to school, actually. But anyway, all this is going on, and there's a detective trying to find out... Um, you know, who's killing people and who's sending these threatening um, valentines and so on. The third act of the movie is where it really goes crazy. Um, you know, the Cupid face killer is starting to, you know, one by one uh, kill these people and kill the, the friends. Um, and you start to think maybe it is Jeremy Melton doing it because he's killing all the girls who said no to him. Um, now, you know, you got, uh, what's his name, the dude from Bones who is with Kate, and he's an alcoholic, he has problems, him and her are kind of up and down right now with the relationship, but he's still given a chance. To be with Marley Shelton, I would cut my right leg off, honestly. I'd cut both legs off. She's gorgeous. Anyway, but the third act is where it really lets loose. And let me tell you, let me say something about the reveal. They do reveal who the killer is, but they do it at the very, very end of the movie. And I'm talking about the very end. You know, it's not like Scream where the last like half hour or so they reveal who the killers are and they have this whole thing at the end with the killers. No, 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 no. They reveal who the killer is right before the credits hit right before it. There's kind of this, um, uh, I want to say there's this twist that happens before that um, that kind of throws you off guard, which is kind of cool. But at the very end is when they reveal it. And that really, I, I like that. Because it do, doesn't do the same thing as Scream did. It doesn't do the same thing as some of these horror, horror films do where they reveal the killer, haha, ha, I'm the killer, haha, ha, now you're gonna have to deal with me. No, no, no. They don't do it that way. I like that. It's a very entertaining movie, okay? And I've always looked past it. You know, it was always in my collection since Scream Factory got a hold of it. They've really cleaned it up nice, they've added features and stuff like that. But uh, this is a movie that I'd always looked past for some reason. I remember seeing this in theater and loving it. But I'd always watch My Bloody Valentine 3D or My Bloody Valentine the original. And, you know, who, who doesn't watch those movies? But th I feel like this one always gets skipped over or left on the back burner or just, you know, no one really cares about this film. And it's a shame. This is a damn good one. It's a good slasher. So I just wanted to give you my quick thoughts on Valentine, give you guys a short review.